Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I am your host Jim Sella in studio with Jay Dash. We got our prospect check for you this week. We're talking about Rob Ref Snyder and Mark Appel. Appel is the dude who stiffed the Buckos a few years ago, correct? Correct. He said, Buck you. Yeah. And now who's he play for? Houston? Plays for Houston. And I guess they kind of, not that they got lucky because they drafted well, but nobody expected them to be good this year. Well, he might have sealed his own fate with that statement and just not signing with the Bucks because he, he didn't believe in them. Did well, he blow out his arm? No, he didn't blow out his arm. He's just not pitching that well in the minors right now. But let's start out with Raul Snyder, the second baseman of the New York Yankees. Now, he's not one of their top, top prospects, but he's still a solid-looking player here. He's not in the top 100 on MLB.com, but he is ranked the seventh best second baseman by by MLB, and he is unranked on Baseball America as well in the top 100. Dude's got a chip on his shoulder. Well, he was drafted in 2012 by the Yankees, fifth round, 187th overall. He came out of Arizona. He already played college ball, and he was actually led Arizona to the 2012 College World Series Championship, and was awarded most outstanding player hitting 476 with two jacks you think they drink arizona iced tea in arizona they drink pennsylvania iced tea probably but look he's an older guy 24 years old so that's one reason he's not good lord you're making me feel like gandalf here if you're 24 is old (laughs) for in terms of prospect (laughs) man i'm not saying he's an old man but that's why he's not ranked in the top 100, really. The, the older you get, the less chance that you have of staying high in the rankings. What's the scouting grades look like? He's really an average all-around player. His hit tool is his best tool. He's a line drive hitter. He has excellent gap power. Look, in three years in the minors, not including 2015 here, he had 28 doubles, 32 doubles, and 38 doubles. Now, they're saying his power is below average, But if you look, I mean, he showed decent power in 2014 between double A and triple A. He had 14 home runs that season in 515 at bats. And really, he has excellent plate discipline and he has a good eye. He doesn't strike out much. And his walk rate was good in the lower levels of the minors until he hit double A in 2014. He took just 14 walks. But he only did K 38 times in 228 at-bats in AA. And that was really the first level where he couldn't maintain that high walk rate. But then they moved him up to AAA in the same season. And he walked 41 times while K-ing 67 times though. His K rate went way up in 287 at-bats in AAA. However, that 2014 season, he led the Yankees minor league system with a 318 average, 38 doubles, and 256 total bases. So he was still a great player that season, but people weren't sure if he was going to be the same kind of hitter in the upper levels of the minors as he was in the lower levels. But you look, in 2015 here in AAA, he still got a nice average hitting 282, a high on base percentage. He he picked his walk rate back up in it decreased the number of strikeouts he takes. Just 44 Ks and 298 at bats compared to 42 walks. Now, they're also saying this guy is not very fast. He did steal a lot of bases in the lower level of the minors. Again, they didn't think he would be able to keep that up in the upper levels of the minors. And really, in 2014, he did have only nine stolen bases in 515 at bats, and he got caught stealing a lot as well. But this season, he's shown it again. 10 stolen bases through half of a season, 298 at-bats. He improved his base running ability. Now, I don't think it's out of the question to see this guy steal double digits in the big leagues. The Yankees could use some talent to come up from within because they're just blasted with all these old man contracts like Teixeira and Rodriguez. If this guy could come up and just be a solid player for them, that would be some relief. Well, if he's going to do it, it's going to have to be with his bat. Like I said, he doesn't have too much power. He doesn't have too much speed. And his defense is below average. He was actually a a corner outfielder in college with Arizona. But when the Yankees drafted him, they knew his 
offensive potential would play better at a position like second base. Now, he can't be a utility infielder. He's not going to play third base or shortstop for you. Uh, he, they don't like his power potential at a corner outfield spot. So this guy has to play second base pretty much. I mean, he can move to the outfield, but he's going to be nothing more than a fourth outfielder or something if, unless he really has his average up at 330 or something. But he's just mediocre defensively. His bat's going to have to translate to the bigs very well for him to be an everyday player. But if you look right now, the Yankees, they're in first place still. They're 44-38. and 38. They're a game and a half ahead of Baltimore. But this is the tightest division race to this point. The Boston Red Sox are in last in this division, and they're six games behind the Yankees. Just look at the Pirates. They have the second-best record in the all of baseball, and they're six games behind the Cardinals. So this is a very tight division. And if you look, the Yankees... They're struggling at second base right now. They have Steven Drew, who's gotten most of the playing time this season. He's hitting 178 with a 251 on base percentage. Now, the one thing he does do, he's hit some home runs this season. He hit 11 home runs and 236 at bats. Now, the 20 home run potential here is nice, but that's all he's doing. When you're on base is lower than the average major leaguer's average. <laughs> Yeah, You're having a rough year. Steven Drew, I would never really liked this dude. I mean, back in He's the day two when... two first names. That's why he sucks. When he was a rookie, this guy had huge potential. When he turned into an okay baseball player, but lately, the past few years, he has been pretty terrible. And if you look, he has one hit in his last 20 at-bats. Now, they are giving pro prospect Jose Perella a try as well. They've given him some playing time He's recently. He's 25. This dude's ancient. His knees are going to blow out. Well, yeah. I mean, he has some <laughs> offensive upside. He, he looked pretty good last season in a few at-bats. But yeah, he's a little bit older of a prospect, 25 years old. And really, he's not the same type of prospect as Rob Ref Snyder. Ref Snyder is a better prospect. But look, Perello's a little bit older. He showed some offensive potential. So you want to give him the first shot at locking down the second base job. And really, if you look, he's hitting 203 with a 227 on base and 64 bats. I mean, you can't make a decision on a guy in 64 bats. But with Rob Ref Snyder breathing down his back, it's kind of hard to give this guy too much time struggling like this hitting around 200 I mean this guy doesn't have much pop he does have a home run right now but he's not going to give you too much pop he has a little bit of speed but I see Rob Ref Snyder coming up pretty soon and getting a shot himself at this job the Yankees should do what they did on Major League and I think it was the third one and time two together and then hit ground balls at him and see who does better <laughs> I don't think it's going to work like that a lot cooler if it did so Rob Ref Snyder, his potential, I mean, he could be something around a 275 hitter, but with his line drive approach and his gap power, he could actually be a 300 plus type hitter. His on base percentage, I expect to be 340 plus at least if he's able to maintain that walk rate. And one way to maintain a walk rate is sh show power, show you that 14 home run power is for real. Now, do I think he's gonna do that every season? No, I think his power is more of a 10 to 15 tight max. You might see a couple seasons at 7 or 8. But if he's able to show a little bit of power, some solid gap power, it's going to make the pitchers try to nibble at the corners a little bit more, and then he'll be able to... Take some walks. Yeah, take some more walks, able to get that walk rate up in that on-base percentage. I mean, if he has a 340 on-base... And with the kind of walk rate he has, I mean, that's when he's a 275 hitter. If he had a 300 average or higher and he was able to take those walks like he showed in the minors he could be well close to a 400 on base type guy now do i think that's going to happen i don't know it all depends how this gap power works out for him really i don't know steven drew and his 251 on base just seems too tempting to keep there <laughs> yeah for real i mean if you look at the 11 home runs and 236 at bats at least he's giving you something it's the only thing he's doing i think he only hits he's got are his home runs Screw this dude. His doubles and home Pretty runs, close. that's it. Uh, he's beat. Ref Snyder's speed, like I said, he has average speed at best, but he's a good base runner. He's, he's not going to show the stolen base numbers he showed in the lower level of the minors. He had 11 in 162 at bats in 2012 in a full and between a full and advanced in 2013 he had 23 in 467 at bats. I think that's a little too high. Uh, I'm looking at uh, again, sort of like power, 10 to 15 
per season. But, hey, a second baseman that gives you double-digit home runs and double-digit stolen bases and can hit for a high average, he has some value for you. Believe it. Now, he has the ability to score a lot of runs with that high on-base percentage, and he has decent RBI potential, too. Like I said, the, the gap power is definitely already there. It's whether or not it's going to turn into home run type power though but if things work out the way Yankees fans hope and his bat does play up in the big leagues he could be a number two type hitter for him but if the bat doesn't work out as good as expected he might end up in a bench role just due to the lack of his defensive upside send him to Arizona dude's garbage no I wouldn't say he's garbage I, I like this guy and I think he does have that offensive potential and he should be able to realize it in the bigs whether it's this year or not I'm not sure I mean give him a chance this year it may not work out and then you can send him back down and give him another shot next year but with what you got going on in the bigs right now I, I really don't see a reason why not to give him a shot I mean he's old enough he was already a, an advanced hitter coming out of Arizona give him a shot right now see what happens trade Neil Walker for him well speaking of trades listen if they decide he's not their guy for second base long term they're in a division race so he could be a definite trade chip for someone who is looking for a second baseman the Phillies didn't chase play second base do you think they'd take a flyer on him maybe if they could make a playoff run I could see the Yankees wanting something like Cole Hamels and Ref Snyder being a piece going to the Phillies you never know you do never know all right let's move on to Mark Appel from the Houston Astros starting pitcher. He is the 24th best prospect according to MLB.com and he's ranked number 31 by Baseball America. He thinks the Pirates are number one. You're dead wrong. Just the wrong finger. <laughs> he will be 24 years old on July 15th, so he's already an older guy. He is 6'5", 220 pounds, right-handed. This is Big guy. Yeah, this is the size you want out of a frontline starter. Now, he went to school at Stanford. He went into the draft after his junior year, but he chose to return to Stanford for his senior year instead of siding with the Pirates who drafted him in 2012. What a little punk. I mean, I don't like the Pirates either, but if I got drafted, what was it, like number one overall or something? Or well, top I think he said actually said something like, this is where ball players go to die or something, you know? Nice. And he decided to go back to Stanford. And but while he was playing in Stanford, the Pittsburgh Pirates turned their past 25 years around. Well, th it didn't hurt him, though. I mean, the Houston Astros decided, you know what, we're going to draft you first overall in 2013. Now, could the Pirates have turned him into a better pitcher? That is possible because the Pirates have been doing great jobs with their uh, young pitching, old pitching, all their pitching. They have been turning guys' careers around recently. Well, I mean, Houston, they really haven't had much. I mean, they have a good pitching staff this season. Dallas Keuchel, they turned into a great pitcher. But I think sticking with Pirates might have been the better route for him. Who wants to live in Houston? Ugh, it's all hot and dry. <laughs> Come on, Pittsburgh, we got the incline. We got sweet-ass bridges that are collapsing. We got winters that freeze your pipes. It's awesome. Listen, in that 2013 draft, when he got drafted first overall, he was widely considered the best pitcher and player of the draft. But a dominating debut by... Colorado's John Gray, who was drafted in the same draft, and a rough start for Appel quickly put Gray ahead of Appel on most rankings, though recently both have fell a little bit in the rankings. Both were very high. Top 15, I believe, both were at one time. Both have dropped off a little bit, but Gray is considered the better pitcher at this point. Appel has an excellent fastball, one of the best in the minors. He sits in the mid-90s, but it can often go up to the high 90s, 98 but he also has a very good slider, and his fastball slider combination is really why many believe he has such high potential. Uh, he actually has an above average third pitch as well. His changeup is supposed to play up very well in the big leagues. But really, if you look, man, it hasn't materialized for him yet in the minor leagues. In 2013, between A short and A full, 
He had 10 starts. Now his ERA was decent, 379 ERA in 38 innings pitched. He allowed 36 hits, 16 earned runs, two jacks, and he had a good walk rate, nine walks, and a decent K rate, 33K. So the numbers are there, but really this was an advanced guy coming out of college. People thought he could make it to the bigs really quick, and he should have dominated at these levels very fast. And uh, like I said, the numbers aren't terrible. It's just not what people expected out of him. And then you go into 2014, they moved him up to A advanced. He made 12 starts there. Look at this, a 974 ERA, 44.1 innings pitched, allowed 74 hits, 48 earned runs, 9 home runs, 11 walks, and 40 Ks. Now the walks still very well. His, his control is very good to this point, and his K rate looks good as well. But look, very hittable, 74 hits and 44.1 innings. Brutal. His career ERA is what five five nine in the minors, something like that. Five five, five nine. That's ridiculous. And you're a first round pick. That yeah. And like I said, he's supposed to be a very advanced pitcher. John Gray and Appel were supposed to be in the big leagues already because they were supposed to spend maybe a year in the minors and be ready to pitch in the bigs. And it just hasn't worked out like that for him. He might be able to pitch in my Sandlot league that I play in and dominate. So, like I was saying, in 2014 in A advanced, he was getting lit up, and the front office decided to get him out of this league. Now, it was a hitter's league, the California League, but you should still be pitching better than that in, in this league. And they decided to move him up to double A. Uh, the front office was actually called out by an unnamed major league player for the move because there was better pitchers in their system at the lower levels at the time, and they're giving this guy a promotion. But you really got to think about it. They put their first overall draft pick in this guy. He's struggling terribly at this level. They had to get him out of there. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, you know, players just like to complain. Bitch and moan because stuff didn't go their way or their buddy was the guy in the minors that they became friends with on the bus on those long trips. Yeah. Well, if you look, it paid off for the Astros because when they moved him up to double A, he made six starts. And he showed his best ERA at any level to that point. A 369 ERA in 39 innings pitched. He allowed 35 hits, 16 earned runs, just two home runs. Still had the nice walk rate, 13 walks, and a nice K rate, 38 Ks. His whip was 123 at double A that season. So it really helped that they moved him out of that league in A advanced. My big worry is he's averaging under five innings per start. That's not good, not in, even in the minors. I mean, I know you're developing, so you're not running his pitch count into the 150s or even the 100s most likely, but come on, man. You're in the minor leagues. You can't pitch into the sixth, seventh inning? Well, this guy does have a lot of stuff to work on. Is he going to become a closer or a bullpen guy? Because that's kind of pansy-like. He has a lot to show still, but really, the Astros organization is asking himself, what else can we do? I mean, do we just leave him down here? This guy is already 24 years old. We made him our top draft pick in 2013. He might be a guy that it takes until he's 26, 27, 28 years old to really turn into a dominant frontline starter. But right now, I mean, you might as well give him a chance in the big leagues and see what he can do. I mean, in 2015, he pitched not great in double A, 426 ERA. And in triple A, they gave him two starts and he, he's pitched terrible. 8.2 innings, 10 earned runs. He has a 10.38 ERA in AAA in two starts. Now, it's only two starts, and you maybe want to see him get one good start in at AAA, but really, you don't want to wait forever on this guy. You maybe give him a chance, and if it doesn't work out for him, you send him back down, see if he pitches any better in AAA, and then bring him back up and see what happens. But if it doesn't work out, I mean, I'd maybe put him at the back end of your bullpen or something. you got to find a way to make this guy useful for you. He seems like he has the type of stuff where if he flames out as a starter, he could be a eighth or ninth inning type pitcher. He's got a dominant fastball, you know, up in the high 90s, and we don't necessarily think that you have to have that here at the spread considering <laughs> yeah. Mark Melanson doesn't, but to be an effective closer, you also have to have really good control, and he doesn't walk a lot of people, so he shows that control, and if he's willing to take on that role... I mean, Mariano Rivera was very important in the New York Yankees' runs at all those World Series. So if you have a dominant closer that's going to stay healthy and be dominant over a long period, it's not what you want out of a top 10 pick in the draft, but at least it's something. Yeah, I mean, they're going to give him a shot at starter first. But right. 
in uh, they're going to give him as much time as they possibly can to turn into a, a starter but in the end they have to figure out a way to make this guy useful for your big league team and it might end up being at the back end of the bullpen and really that they don't have a future closer at this point so it does kind of make a little bit of sense but it, it'd be really nice to see him actually turn into a starter. The good news for Appel is the Astros are playing good right now, and they don't necessarily need him up. I'm not saying that they couldn't use him or, you know, if he was pitching good, but there's not that, like, rabid fan base screaming, what, like last year where everybody wanted Polanco up to help us win. The Astros, they're doing good, so if they don't get him up this year, I don't think it would be a huge disappointment, but you're definitely slowing his progression then if you don't get him at least some big league innings. Yeah, if you were asking me, I would not bring him up this year. i got to see something better out of him in the minors. But from what I'm hearing is they're trying to push him up and try to get him experience in the big leagues here as they go for a division title. I mean, they're sitting in first place in the AL West right now at 49-36. and 36. It's the second best record in the American League. Uh, they're three and a half games above a surging Angels team, though. The Angels are on a roll right now. And the pitching has been great for them. They have the sixth least runs allowed in the AL with 326. They have Dallas Keuchel, who is an ace. Lance McCullers is a prospect they already caught up this season. He has a 2.16 ERA right now, so he's pitching very well for him. Vincent Velasquez is another pitching prospect that we actually did a prospect check on, if you want to go check that out. Now, he got caught up. He struggled a little bit, but in his last two outings, his relievers have let him down. He actually has three runs, three earned runs counted against him that were just the inherited runners. He lost two wins and a quality start because of it. And really, he could have a much better ERA right now if his relievers would have just got him out of it. Colin McHugh, he's not pitching that great this season, a 454 ERA, but you can accept it at the back end of your rotation. Brett Oberholzer, they moved out of the rotation. He has a 432 ERA right now. They're actually giving Dan Straley a shot. He had one start so far, four runs in 4.2 innings pitched. So, as you can see, they have Roberto Hernandez, Scott Fellman's on a DL. They have options, but really, they still are searching for a number five pitcher, at least. And they might give Mark Appel a shot to be that guy this season. It's a little scary to me with how tight the division race is to trust even one game to a guy who's unproven. That's the only thing that worries me. Well, they're try they've done it with two other pitchers already. I mean, the only proven guy really is Dallas Keuchel in this rotation. Lance McCullers was unproven, and Velasquez, and they're holding their own right now. We'll have to see how it turns out. But I mean, you, they already did it with two guys. I guess it wouldn't be too surprising if they did it with a third. But. Appel's potential, he still has the stuff to be an ace and a frontline starter for the Houston Astros. But the, like I said, the results just haven't shown up yet in the minor leagues. And he could end up being either a back-end starter or he could be at the back end of the bullpen. I mean, he has the heat for it. He has good control. I think he'd be a great closer, but you, you want to get more out of this guy, a, a number one overall pick. At worst, though, I think... With the stuff he has, he has the excellent slider and the big-time fastball. I think he'll be a number three type starter if he never really comes into his own. But like I said, it could be he could be 28 years old and finally put it together and be that front-line guy. You never know. It's weird. Sometimes rookies come in, dominate quickly because nobody really knows about them, and then they fade away rather quickly also. This could be a guy who struggles in the minors, comes up, and then just dominates you know, in the majors. There's a lot of guys that are great in the minors and come up and completely wash out. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it before. Uh, I'm not saying Bryce Harper was terrible in the minors, but he was, what, a 270 hitter or something in the minors, 250 maybe. Trout the same way. And, yeah, well, Trout had no power in the minors, really, and then he comes up, hits 40 home runs. But I'm going to say Ref Snyder, he's going to come up first, and he needs a shot to be the starting second baseman for the New York Yankees. He's shown everything he can in the minors. He's using his tools to his full potential. He's able to hit for a high average, having high on base percentage. He has a line drive swing, giving him good gap power. And he's actually, over the past season and a half, he's been turning it into a little bit more 
which helps him. He's going to have a decent RBI total if the, if he's able to stick at the top of the lineup, and he's going to be able to score uh, a lot of runs with that high on base percentage. It, the real question about him is how's his defense going to turn out. And Mark Capel, I believe he's going to get a shot at some point this season, whether it's in September or earlier. I'm just not sure if it's going to turn out very well for the Astros. Well, we'll see. You hate the Yankees and I hate the Astros, so one of our teams are going to be getting beat up on. Well, I think I'd give Ref Snyder a little bit better of a chance to succeed right away. I mean, he's an advanced bat and he really hasn't showed any problems in the minor leagues outside of, of a short stint his debut season. Besides that, I mean, he's been hitting the ball every season. Well, that's all we got for you today, folks. Thank you for tuning in, Dash. Thanks for coming in studio. Fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the website. It's the spreadnews.simplesite.com. Like us on Facebook and keep subscribing to that YouTube channel.